Hello my friends, it's Chris Biffle, Coach B, and it is May 19th. This is the last broadcast of the year before summer break. We may have a few summer specials, but we got a doozy for you tonight. You've heard there's no silver bullet. Tonight, you're going to get the silver bullet. A game that solves all of our problems. And not only that, reduces pollution and saves the whales and lowers your tax rate. It's just the silver bullet. Here we go. Whole Brain Teaching Masterclass, The Brainy Game, Program 579. And I'm starting right from the top with a sizzler. Bigger than a big idea coming at the end of this webcast. And I'm so excited I didn't even spell the right. Bigger than big idea coming at the end of this webcast. Now, if you are not watching this live, this is for you. There's 500 free downloads at this website address. Why are there only 500? Because that's all I can afford, my friends. We're paying for them. Here's the news. Our manual is one of the highest rated books in any category among the millions on Amazon.com. Check it out. Hunger Games has 4.6 out of 5 stars. Lord of the Rings, 4.6 out of 5 stars. Whole Brain Teaching, 4.9 out of 5 stars. We're whomping international bestsellers. Now, let me be honest. I know that's a bizarre thing to say online, but let me be honest. Usually our rating is 4.7 out of 5 stars, which does beat those international bestsellers. But there was a moment the other day when I was checking it said 4.9. So for a moment, we were double whomping the international bestsellers. They may be selling more books. But they're not making people, per capita, any happier than we are. I'm thrilled with that. The phones are ringing. Yes, they are. We are one of the world's most popular education websites. And we are composed of only the very best, most talented, most energetic teachers who gather every Monday night to share their talent and their energy. Here's Biffy Bluebird. What if someone wants a copy of these slides or needs a professional development certificate? Biffy, I've got the answer, and so does Smarty. Smarty, how you doing? I'm doing good, Coach. Easy breezy, lemon squeezy, details are at the end of this program. Well, my burning question for you, ladies and gentlemen, is... I first heard of easy breezy, lemon squeezy from my granddaughter. Does everybody know that phrase? Am I the last one on board with Easy Breezy Lemon Squeezy? All right, back to the show. Now, this is important. During the night, during this broadcast, Nancy Stoltenberg will be putting this link online. This is where you can see samples of competition brainy videos. Competition Brainy Videos, that's the silver bullet. We're going to be talking a lot about them tonight. Notice we're going through a 190 page free ebook that you, my friends, are going to get for just watching tonight if you watch long enough. I didn't mention it goes till dawn, but hey, teachers will do anything for free. 20 years ago, I began to think about a game, the wisdom game. All I knew was the more you played it, the wiser you became. I really didn't believe such a game could exist, but it was lovely to think about it. And so there I was, my friend, walking around the world thinking about a title, the wisdom game. And helpfully, the title came with a subtitle, the more you play, the wiser you become. But that's all it came with. Title, subtitle, what on earth was a wisdom game? I figured it was just a philosophy teacher's fantasy. Like, you had to be nice if there was a game that people played it and it made them wiser. My friends, here's the problem with games. The more you play them, 
the better you get at the game. But it doesn't make you a better person. I'll say that again. Play chess a lot, you'll get to be a really good chess player, but it's not going to make you nicer to your kids or better able to think about anything but chess. Games are centripetal. Pull you in, pull you in, pull you in, but a wisdom game would be centrifugal. It would make you better at life. Wow, wouldn't that be neat? Anybody out there think that would be neat to have a wisdom game? Because my friends, that's the silver bullet. Oh yeah, people are excited about a wisdom game. You play it, it makes you wiser. Gosh, how could that be? All right, here we go. About six months ago, I write this in May 2014, I began to draw gestures representing important concepts and critical thinking. Golly, I thought, these gestures are cool. I didn't know it was heading towards a wisdom game. I was just drawing gestures. So I renamed it the Brainy Game. And would you agree with me, online audience? I'll get some interest in a game called the Wisdom Game. But this is for everybody, pre-K on up. The Brainy Game, I think, is just a cooler name. Are you agreeing or would you rather I call it Wisdom Game? It's got to be fun. So you and I know, my online audience, this is really, this is really the wisdom game. This is just for me and you. And that way all the pictures can be called brainies. I don't think we'd want to call the pictures whizzies. I don't know if you know the slang, but I'm not going to go into it. All right, here's the silver bullet. Students, at every grade level, K-12, every skill level, special ed to gifted, in every subject can build their reasoning and writing talents with the same game. That's huge. We don't have anything, so far as I know, that does that. A game for all. Making the game even more remarkable, the whole K-12 program fits on the front and back of one sheet of paper, i.e. Anybody out there trembling with excitement about a game that is the silver bullet? One game for all on the front and back of one stinking sheet of paper? Trembling says J.M. Pugh. John Bukowski says, oh yes. And Nancy says, oh. Southern teacher says, sweet and crystal long is shaking with excitement. Here it is, my friends. The brainy game, for every kid everywhere, and it costs a few pennies to reproduce, here's what makes me mad. It took me 44 years to design this wonder, and I retired before I could play it with my college students. Poor me, lucky you. And if you're watching tonight, my friends, your watching will be rewarded with a free download of this whole stinking webcast. won't cost you a nickel. All right, before we explore this wonderful all-purpose reasoning game, let's ask a question rarely posed. Why is reasoning so hard? Why is abstract thought generally so difficult for everyone? I'm in philosophy. There's a lot of reasoning going on, but no philosopher I'm aware of in the last 25 centuries ever asked, why is it so hard to reason? So I didn't get this idea anywhere. I'm just dreaming it up. Here's why I think reasoning is so hard. Let's look at an example of reasoning. All A is not B. That's a bit difficult to understand. That's an example of reasoning. All A is not B. Let's make it a little easier to understand. This shows all A is not B. Look, every bit of A is not B. Most people would say this is easier to understand because it's visual. Keyword. 
Now, let's go full screen here. When we reason with symbols, we use the prefrontal cortex. All A is not B. Little science lesson for you here, my friends. I'll get to the brainy game, and you'll see why I'm doing this. However, when we represent symbols with pictures, reasoning becomes easier, clearer. We say it's clear, that's visual. But our visual cortex is in the back of our brain. So when we show pictures, we turn reasoning into pictures, it's easier to understand. So one factor that makes reasoning difficult is because it's abstract, non-visual. And we can make abstract thought easier to understand by making it visual. See? Get two parts of the brain involved. And here are two more parts. The motor cortex controls movement. The limbic system, among other things, is involved with our emotions. Now, abstract thought isn't physical and it's supposed to be non-emotional. So abstract thought is supposed to stay away from movement and your feelings. That's why it's hard. It's just part of the brain. When you ponder all A as B as symbols, you're not physically moving and your emotions are not involved. But what if we could make abstract thought visual, physical, and fun something it has never been? Stop there for a moment. I'll say it again. What if we could make abstract thought visual, physical, and fun, something it has never been. Anybody excited by that? I'm taking a drink just to calm myself down. Is that possible, says Helen Bro. D. Manuel is excited, and John Bukowski says yes. It would be so exciting. It would change everything. I'll say that again. If we could change the way we reason, maybe we would reason better. Who reasons? Do pre-K kids reason? Yes. Do teenagers reason? No. But they could. Everyone's involved in reasoning, but we don't do it well because it's all up here in the prefrontal cortex. It's non-visual. It's non-physical. And it isn't much fun. All A is not B. Go back to the screen. What if we could transform reasoning into a whole brain activity instead of a merely prefrontal cortical activity? That's taken me 45 years to figure out. Check it out. The brainy game makes reasoning visual by representing concepts with pictures, makes reasoning physical by linking the pictures to gestures, and it makes reasoning fun by turning abstract thought into a crazy game. Now look at the following screen. There are 33 brainies. Those of you with experience, I challenge to find the last of the 33 brainies. There's one new one. Get ready. One new brainy coming up. Who can find the new brainy? There are the 33 pictures, the silver bullet that changes abstract thought into visual, physical liveliness. Oh my goodness, Addie Kelly got complete sentence, please. That's the new brainy. My friends, this is the key to everything. We want to start with complete sentence, please. That's the first thing we teach our kids. I ask a question, give me a complete sentence answer. All right, there are, there's one side of a piece of paper, and here's the other side. Two screens, 
the whole program, and there it is. The same thing, but without the name. So it's a giant flash card. A giant flash card. The whole universe of reasoning that kids will need. Let's just go back a second. We've got online teachers here. Look at the brainies and tell me which of those you wish your kids would use more. Would you like kids to use if-then reasoning, but however? I think Andre de Chodon would love to have some if-then reasoning. Which of these brainies would you like to see in your curriculum next year? Terry B.R. says capital and end marks. Topic sentences, Addy. Details, says Sarah Metter. Detail adders, for example, says Addy. All of them. Andre says, if then for hypothesis. Changes and deep citation. Andre, I'm with you on changes. Quotes and a positive. Well, this is how we can do it. We teach them gestures. I had an experiment today via Skype, which is not an ideal format. I taught all 33 gestures to teachers in half an hour, which means that first graders could learn them quite a bit more quickly. We know that kindergartners can master three quarters of these. And first graders, at least according to Farrah Shipley, who I really trust, Farrah Shipley has her kids mastering virtually all of these. All right, so grade level. Tell us, our experts, how long would it take you to teach your kids half of these brainies? So tell us your grade level and how long it would, teach kids, would take to teach kids half the brainies. This is what's great about having an online audience. Blizzard says 30 minutes. Half in one 45 minute class period. Sixth grade, says Sarah Metter. 30 minutes, says D. Manuel, sixth grade. 15 minutes, says Crystal Long, fourth grade. Third grade, 30 minutes. Two class periods, says Addie. Half in a week, second. Maybe a week, says first grade. Yeah, time well spent. Now, there's some big bonuses coming at you. So give everybody, has anybody given people, their kids, a brainy desk set? Like just the front and back of the brainies? How's that working? Nancy, I know you have. Brainy desk sets. A.D. Lutz, yes we could. Jackie Nasuno has. Michelle Shelton, Michelle Shelton happens to have. Michelle, you can change your name to red because your classroom is the greatest I've seen. Put them on their desks. All right. Now, I'm going to describe the brainy game, but first let's look at the jumbo brainies. The jumbo brainies take the brainy game to a whole other level. In fact, they blow it up. Check out jumbo brainies. Look at this. Now, to see sample competition brainy videos, click this link. Nancy, put this link on every once in a while. Tell them these are competition brainy videos. And our heart, you're going to love the brand new jumbo brainies. Sash, don't worry, you can print these now. I'm not going to change the game for 10 or 15 minutes. Now this is it for the summer, folks. So go ahead and print it out. All the critical thinking brainies are purple. 
So I'm just going to go through them. Note the new format. And note this. You see, I put this here to show that when you do because, we need to do an adder. So this is the big gesture, because clapper, then the adder. And here's the one point that a because is worth. Every one of the jumbo brainies there, and then a description of how to use the jumbo brainy. Gesture, teaching, other brainies it can be used with, and how to score it. Yes. Sarah, I made them bigger because of what you said earlier. Just forget I ever took any advice from you, Sarah, because I'm afraid you're going to spit soda out of your nose again. The new size is much better. Weldon621, thank you. This is phenomenal. Visually more friendly. The points on there really help. So I'm just going to go through these quickly. I'm going to stop at one. So here it goes. Just get excited. When I come to one of your favorite brainies, just put it, tell us your grade level, and name the brainy if it's one of your favorites. And... Also, in addition, and notice we have the comma gesture right here. For example, notice we have the comma gesture, and when you give an example, we want a detail adder. Let's stress that. A number of these brainies is just mandatory that you give a detail. So if you have a kid give an example, they have to give an adder that expands the example. When a kid gives a similar metaphor, they need an adder that explains a similar metaphor. When they do a deep citation, adder, adder, adder. Here we go. Thirty-three jumbo brainies. All of these described in detail. In conclusion and to sum up, notice it comes with a comma. But or however. But cannot start a sentence, however can. If then, anybody out there thrilled with if then? Give me some examples of how you'd use if then in your class. Do you want your kids to think about if then? Cause and effect, says Jackie. If then in science. Sarah says yes. Addie gives a nice example. If you're late to class, then you might get a lower grade. If I heat this water and sugar, then it will dissolve. Very important. So there's a description if then. Triple whammy. If you don't know what a triple whammy is, look at the webcast. Nancy, can you find a webcast on Triple Whammy? Triple Whammy is our all-purpose essay thesis sentence. And here is a Triple Whammy sentence frame. If you want to see kindergartners doing Triple Whammies, there's a link for you. A little bit more on the Triple Whammy. Detail adder, this is big. Notice the detail adder has an asterisk. Detail adder has an asterisk because every time you use a detail adder, you're scoring points. One of the fundamental features of this game is we want you to use some of these brainies a lot. So we like to see the capital letter. We like to see the period. You have to put them in there or the teacher will stop you. 
But your first capital just scores a point. You use capitals after that, no points. But every time you do a detail adder, that scores points. Why? Because we want more detail adders. So the game is structured to award points for exactly what we want. And that's cool. So a lot of information about detail adders. More information. For example, in addition, also, if, then, but, and however, those need detail adders at minimum. Here's simile metaphor. Notice that simile metaphor, this is the gesture. Comparison is this gesture. Simile metaphor is this gesture, because a simile or a metaphor is similar <laughs> to a comparison. Now the grammar brainies are green. There's independent clause. And next year we'll talk more about these. There's dependent clause. <laughs> Let me show you the screen, okay? Here is, let me start that over. Grammar brainies are green. Independent clause, independent clause, dependent clause gesture, dependent clause. Adjective, kids need to use more adjectives. A positive, anybody dig a positives? I didn't know what they were until Chris Rexted told me. Anybody digging a positives? They're huge. How about it, folks? Addie Kelly digs the positives. Sarah Metter loves the positives. Jackie digs them. Liz from Elizabeth says great. Nancy says, oh yeah. Ad Lux says they're awesome. Madeline24 is digging it. And Crystal Long says they rock. Mrs. Franks, she loves the positives. Dependent clause, independent clause. We'll talk about that next year. And the other way around, independent clause, dependent clause. And punctuation brainies are blue. Capital letter. Let's just stop. You know, one thing that got me into this, I got college kids who don't start sentences with capital letters or end them with periods. College. Whose fault is it? Our fault. We didn't give them enough repetitions. The only place kids are getting repetitions in these writing concepts is when they're writing and they don't do much writing and then we don't give it back to them until two weeks later. Oral writing, that's how we want to do this. Here we go, end mark. Now there's three end marks, which is very handy. The period is, I'll give it to you, here we go. This is the period. This is the question mark. Here's the exclamation mark. Semicolon. Zoop. Colon. I discovered colon because Andre had his kids using a colon. I thought, gee, we better come up with something. They invented the gesture. Again, a great idea that I stole from someone else and that I'll never admit. Comma is there. There's indent. Some people are doing this. Mm. I kind of like that. Mm. New paragraph. Colon, semicolon, I've shown you. It's a gesturepedia. There they are. It is a gesturepedia. Quotation marks. Eek, eek. I'll show you that. Here we go. Eek, eek. That's quotation marks.
Apostrophe. Zeep. Wait. Zeep. Apostrophe is a, a, a comma is zoop because it's lower. And apostrophe is zeep because it's higher. And as a bonus, I hope some of you are sitting down. As a bonus, I teach you how to teach singular and pos plural possessive nouns. Singular and plural possessive nouns. Just for the heck of it, I show you how to teach them. Anybody just thrilled to be able to teach kids how to use apostrophes? Right here on this screen, I'll show you the screen. Here's the easiest way to teach singular and plural possessives. I'll teach you right now. I'll teach you right now. The boy's boat. Boy apostrophe s. Yes. The apostrophe is a splitter. It splits the s away from the boy and leaves one boy behind. So when there's only one boy, use apostrophe as a splitter. Boy's boat, s apostrophe. S apostrophe, the s is a jammer. See, it jams the s over and gives us more than one boy. So you got one boy, splitter. More than one boy, jammer. Zeep, zeep. How do you like splitter and jammer? Took me a long time, Ashley. Thank you very much. All right, my friends, we have a real tough one coming up. Einstein triangle. Now, we want kids to make comparisons. We want kids to make contrasts. But toughest of all is the connection. Here's what we've been, what we've seen in our tests, in our sample. Kids are saying it's a connection when in fact it's a comparison. A cat and a dog are connected because they're both mammals. That compares cat and dog. So we changed up connection. We said, let's make it 5W plus H. That is so much richer. Look at this. We want kids to connect using the 5W plus H questions. So there's a couple of steps. And the steps are listed in the big ebook. First of all, teach the kids just how to say who, what, where, when, why, and how. And then teach them how to ask questions, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Here's how it works. Teach them who, what, where, when, why, and how so they can know what 5W plus H. Give them a topic and let them ask questions. Who is in the story? What did they do? Where did it take place? When did it take place? Why did the characters do what they did? Just ask who, what, where, when, why questions. Those two steps are easy. The next step is hard, but it should be hard. When a kid is making a connection, they need to say who connect and then talk about the who. They don't give the question. They just say, this is a where connect. This is a when connect. So let's say I'm talking about Batman. Who connect? Batman is a rich citizen who fights criminals. Where connect? He lives in Gotham City. When connect? He fights criminals late at night. You see, by asking, by making those statements, a paragraph is built automatically with lots of crucial details. Because who, what, where, when, why, and how covers all the crucial details. What do you think of that? Who connect, where connect, why connect? Little by little. But that is going to give them stuff to write about. It's way better. Listen to me. It's way better than those bubble diagrams we put on the board. You make the bubble diagrams, this connects, and all those. And you still don't have an essay. If you ask who, what, where, when, why, and how, and you write a sentence about each of those, you've got a lot of meat there. I'm glad you guys are digging it. I thought you would. 
All right, so that information is in this huge download. Special brainies are yellow. We want kids to answer with complete sentences. Now, wait a second. You might say, Coach, there's a lot of information here. My answer is, of course there is. And my other answer is, front and back of one sheet of paper. And you can teach 33 brainies in half an hour to an hour. Silver bullet! You could use it in reading. You could use it in writing. You could use it in math. My goodness, you could use it wherever you want them to reason, which is everywhere. You see it? See why I'm so happy and depressed at the same time? Happy that I, I finally figured this out? Depressed that I don't get to teach my college kids using this, this great stuff? All right, so there's complete sentence. We want to teach kids the difference between shallow statements and deep statements. Anybody use the help me? It's one of my favorites. Who's using help me out there? Thank you, R. Hart. You cheered me up. Look at the videos. There's change, an important word in a lot of different subjects. Your free download is coming up in a second, my friend. Topic sentence. We talked about that last week, I think. Deep. We want kids to make deep statements. We did a whole webcast on deep. Deep Citation, we did a whole webcast on Deep Citation, and check this out. We included the whole webcast in this 190-page booklet. All the stuff on how to teach kids to make citations is in this booklet. All right, here's how to play the brainy game. There's two kinds, super speed brainies and competition brainies. Listen here. Without the game... Without the fun, you don't have the limbic system involved. Without the limbic system involved, kids don't care. So the game is crucial to teaching. Who would play video games if they weren't fun? Because they're crazy complicated. It's got to be fun. All right. Super speed brainies is a cinch. You just pair up two kids. Give them a topic, a kid speaks a sentence, another kid speaks a sentence, 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 sentence. They keep track of how many sentences they speak in a minute. Then they do it again and try to beat their record. Beat your record is the most motivating thing we've ever found. So super speed brainies, you can play it just on adjectives. Or you can specify what brainies you want. Or you can do all the brainies. Give them a topic they play. But the, but the cruncher is Coach B's competition brainies. All right, listen carefully. The directions are online right here. I'm going to explain to you competition brainies. It's going to take over the world. Here's how you play. You pull a random topic out from a list of important topics. You give the kids a minute to prepare on the topic. You tell them, be sure you try to use the highest scoring brainies. And the highest scoring brainies are the most complicated ones. The three minute time limit, you randomly point at kids. And I want you to pull the names out of a cup so it's totally random. First kid stands up, gives a triple whammy. Next kid stands up, talks about the triple whammy. Pull the names out randomly, they build the essay. They can do it in kindergarten. They can do it in high school. Same game. And when the game's over, you replay the videotape, because you've been taping it, and you look to see how you did, and you score it then. 
and then you play again to beat your record. Any topic you want, as many brainies as you want, three minutes and the game is over and everyone's involved because the kids, when they stand up, say mirror words. All of those rules that sound so complicated, one screen. You let the kids pick whatever brainies you want or you specify whatever brainies. You send us the video, we'll make your kids famous. And you know what? Here's what we found. First graders can compete against seventh graders, which motivates the first graders, which motivates the seventh graders. Grade against grade. And the scores are up. We have four or five videos already. Take a look at the, at the scores of these videos. See if you can get your kids to do top score. Three minutes is all it takes. If you, after your three minutes, if they can get to about 50 points, then we'll let them to go to four minutes. Now, lots of information about competition brainies. It's all right here. But I'm excited to get to the incredibly huge idea. Here's a brainy strategy, everything you need. Here's the advantages of playing brainy. It's a silver bullet. And what I did was I included the whole topic sentence brainy webcast. Watch this. The whole webcast on topic sentence brainy. It's right here. Everything you need to teach topic sentences. And a way to change topic sentences into a game. And here is how you can make combos of topic sentences. And my friends, I also included, and there's lots of those, I also included the whole Citation Brainy webcast. This is how to teach kids how to do deep citations. So it's all here in this remarkable download. Lots and lots and lots of pages describing everything. Now, remember to see samples of competition brainy videos. Go there and get your kids playing. Different ways to play, but I can't wait for this. Here's the bigger than a big idea. Do me a favor, stop the chitter chat because I'm afraid some people will have medical emergencies when I explain the bigger than the big idea. I'm taking a drink. Here's where this is going. You don't have to beg Lutz. You just, just don't hurt yourself. Hands and eyes, Scrap Bunny, you're so right. Here it comes. I'm so excited. This is, Nancy Stoltenberg doesn't know about this. And if Stoltenberg doesn't know, you know it's got to be new. Check it out. I'm going to tell you, and I don't think you're even going to get it until I explain. Brainy March Madness. Just let those three words sink in for a second. Brainy March Madness. Do you see where this is going? Brackets? Oh. Oh. Here's how it's going to work, my friends. Brainy March Madness in February 2015. Teams are invited to an online brainy tournament and just as in basketball set up in head-to-head -head weekly competitions. Videos are submitted for official scoring. The winner advances until a national champion is crowned. Let's see. You're submitting brainy videos and we're going to a conference with 1,400 teachers. We'll tell them about making brainy videos. You submit the brainy videos, we look them over, just like the NCAA selection committee, and in February, 
we notify 64 classes. You're in the brainy March Madness. We'll set up brackets. And fourth graders could play first graders. And then we'll give them a head-to-head -head matchup. They submit their videos. We score them. We announce the winner. And the winner stays in. Group of 64 to 32. 32 to Elite 8. 32 to Sweet 16 to Elite 8 to Final 4. Head-to-head -head matchups. So you got California playing Oklahoma. Playing, they do a three-minute video, scoring as many points as they can. They turn the video into us. We do the scoring, and we announce the winner, and the bracket changes. Who is excited beyond belief? No limits to the grade levels. Initially, we'll let one grade level play against another. Eventually, we'll have a kindergarten March Madness. So start your competition brainy videos. Get your team going. Figure out how to enter so that the selection committee picks you for the final 64 in February. You could, you could be in New Jersey playing Indiana. And Indiana's tough, my friends. You might have to play Illinois and Sarah Metter. <laughs> Who wants who wants to go up against Illinois and Sarah Metter? The beauty of this game is I think it can be played one grade level against another. We'll see. Yes, my friends, that is the incredible news. Here it is again. And for the online, for the people who are not online, here's some people you can contact about this. Nancy Stoltenberg, of course, never realized she's going to be part and parcel of this, but she is. Chris Rexted is going to be involved. Now, if you're not watching this live, you can get a copy of this webcast by putting $5.79, if you're not watching it live, into PayPal, and I'll send you the whole thing with a whole brain teaching certificate if you're not watching live. Next program, I'm going on summer break, my friends. Buy the book. Hey, anybody out there bought the book and didn't give it a review? Can you just be honest right now? Would you please go to Amazon.com and write a five-star review? Keep us ahead of the international bestsellers. Who will do that for Coach in exchange for a 190-page ebook? Five stars, Amazon.com. We'll do it. I'll wait and see. Please do. Five stars. Let's let's push it up to 4.9. Please do. It would really help us out. Because we're going to beat the international bestsellers. Now, here's the moment you've waited for. My dear online audience that has been so faithful this whole last year, here is, I'm going to put it right here. I'm putting it down. I'll put it down several times. Here is the free download of tonight's webcast right there. Free download of tonight's webcast. There's 500 available. And I want you to send this ebook to everybody. Don't keep it to yourself. Send it to everyone. There's only 500 downloads with that link. But please send it to everyone. Make your own downloads. Cover the world with it. Let's have an incredible February where we have. Brainy March Madness. Tell me how many people you're going to send this to, folks. 
Who can send it to a lot? 190 pages, the silver bullet, solves everything. Manual, how many people are you going to send it to? Everyone at my school. Everyone on their contact list says Addie Kelly. Now don't send them the link. The link is going to wear out after 500. You make your own link. Put it on Dropbox or send them a copy. But don't send them the link. The link is going to wear out. Total of 25, my whole school and district. Here's the link again, my friends. Send it across the world. Let's change the world into a brainy place. Let's teach the world to reason. Scrap Bunny, put it on Teachers Pay Teachers as long as you don't charge a nickel for it. Of course you wouldn't. Post it on your blogs, yes. But don't post the link. You have to figure out because those 500 links are going to... But post it as a download off the blog. Reach teachers in four counties. Well, my friends, I look forward to next February. Brainy March Madness. I want you all to have a great summer. I need to take a little time off. I will be traveling the roads of the United States giving conferences, missing you horribly. Come back next Monday night and chat with each other. How about that? You think you could convince Michelle and Southern Teacher and Blizzard and Nancy to come back next Monday night and just have a little chat fest? All right, my friends. A lot of viewers tonight. Tell us who you are and where, you, where you're from. What grade do you teach? Where are you from? Let's see those names roll down the screen. Washington. Oklahoma. Erie, Pennsylvania. Massachusetts. Maine. Pennsylvania. Fairfax, Virginia. Tennessee. Pittsburgh, California. Well, my friends, it's been a great year. Do keep my family in your prayers. We are in a dark time, and today it's got darker. So keep my family in your prayers. We need all the prayers we can get. It's Coach B signing off, saying power to the teachers, power to the kids. God bless us all. We'll see you in the fall. And maybe a few summer specials. Good night.